Hello and welcome. This is a guide to gases and airlocks. I meant to do this guide for a while but haven't really gotten around to it, uh, mainly due to working on the Project Eden series. You can find links to that in the end of this YouTube video. Uh, now this guide isn't really directed to the advanced player but rather to, to the player who might just have started out and played for a bit but haven't really gotten that deep into the game. Now when I started out I didn't know about airlocks and the reason for that is simple. It's nothing you find on the tabs here by plumbing, ventilation or something like that. It's simply different techniques applied by players to um, separate either different gases from each other or different pressures. Now when I had played for a little while I started to, to Google stuff or YouTube stuff to find out more. And I found a guide about airlocks using water. So. Uh, after that, a whole new world of different things you could build open up for me. And uh, I started to make airlocks everywhere. And a lot of times in places I didn't really need to. So who, who got hypothermia? Oh, this little poor dude. Oh well. Uh, now anyway, uh, I created something I call a rainbow room here uh, to show the different gases. Now it does not have uh, polluted oxygen in here. And the reason is polluted oxygen doesn't divide nicely. It kind of flows through. Uh, oxygen because it shares all the same properties when it comes to weight. Um, so here you say hydrogen on top, then you got oxygen, natural gas, chlorine, uh, and carbon dioxide. And if you just pump in a mix of them here, which is what I did, then we are separate nicely like this. So I'm gonna go and deconstruct these two tiles, and as long as I have somewhat decent pressure here, nothing will leak out. Now, um, you can use that to avoid the need of airlocks. Uh, like for example, up here, uh, a lot of people produce the oxygen this way. You have an electrolyzer and you get hydrogen that you pump up to a hydrogen generator. Um, and you don't really need an airlock here because the hydrogen will sit nicely on top. So as long as you put your, air, your door in the lower section, you risk almost no leakage of hydrogen or none at all. Another example of where you don't need it is this mushroom farm. Um, as long as you have the doors on the top, uh, no carbon dioxide will really leak out, so you don't really need an airlock for that. Same for actually cleaning out carbon dioxide, or of course, you just put it on the lower section of your base, and that's why you see a lot of people put the carbon dioxide, this carbon skimmers on the lower section of the base, but pretty much there, the lower section is where all the carbon dioxide will end up sooner or later as long as it got some type of airflow down there. Um, also a lot of people put the farming areas in the lower section of the base where the carbon dioxide end up and that's because uh, crops don't really rot if they're in a carbon dioxide atmosphere. Um, so they don't really need electricity for the re refrigerators if you just put them down here in the carbon dioxide. Now there's no carbon, I clean up everything here so there's no carbon dioxide but you can leave some carbon dioxide if you want that to happen. Now, it should have opened up the tiles and you see uh, everything nice in here and no gas leakage because I had a somewhat even pressure. Uh, one place where you think you could skip an airlock but you, well you can but it's a hassle. As if you like me have a big room where you use fertilizers to produce natural gas and that you pump out to natural gas generators. Um, in reality you would be able to, to skip an airlock here uh, because natural gas is heavier than oxygen so as long as you keep a somewhat even pressure which can be a hassle since these output uh, natural gas all the time right so you have to regulate that a bit um, but uh, the problem is as soon as you have some type of, of, of mixed atmosphere here sooner or later some carbon dioxide going to slip into the room and it's going to travel through the room towards the bottom of the room sooner or later it's going to pass your pump, get pumped to your natural gas generator and cause wrong element damage. Now you can of course solve that by gas filters, uh, but that means it's the airlock is simply a trade-off between having an airlock or using gas filters which use more energy. Uh, so it's saving energy to use an airlock here. Another example where you really need an airlock is here. Uh, so I want a low um, a really low gas carbon dioxide concentration here and if I wouldn't have an airlock the oxygen would pressure down on the carbon dioxide make it very compact and the reason I want a low 
uh, density atmosphere in here is because I have slixtus in here. And the way slixtus work is they keep a steady output, but only if you keep a low pressure, because if you have a very high pressure, they will just keep, uh, keep the carbon dioxide inside them without letting out any oil, because they produce oil from carbon dioxide until they get the atmosphere low enough in pressure. Uh, so then you need an airlock to separate it. Uh, also, one example of where you need um, an airlock is, is pretty much here, polluted oxygen. Because polluted oxygen, would, well I both want a lower pressure here, pressure here, but I also have polluted oxygen. So if I didn't have an airlock, the polluted oxygen would just mix with the rest of the oxygen. Now in this case I use a mechanized air. Now, uh, I don't have to go into deep, I think, like I said earlier, there's plenty of good gas uh, guides out there, but uh, mechanized, just simple mechanized airlock pretty much have an atmosphere sensor, or two of them, connected to the pump, so, and two, two mechanical doors. So pretty much when the pressure is um, high in here, or when you've got pressure of gas in here, it will lock down the doors, and, and stop pumping out gas, and it will keep the doors locked until there's no gas pressure inside. So that's a good way of, of separate, creating an airlock that is not depending on a liquid. Now, um, then the, the bad side of it is sometimes you get a bit of gas leakage anyway. You don't really get that with a liquid airlock. However, a liquid airlock got another bad thing that, that the mechanized doesn't, and you don't see it really here. But if, say, you want uh, an airlock in an ice biome, where it's really, really cold, you would not really be able to use a water airlock because the water would freeze and cause the airlock to fail. Of course, you could use oil instead, and then you would be good to down to minus, uh, minus um, 40 at least. So an airlock would, the oil would probably be better because it would be able to take both a lot higher temperatures before it boils, because oil boils at very high temperature and a lot lower temperatures as well. Um, uh, so that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to airlocks. Of course, uh, there's other ways to do it. For example, I've seen people use carbon dioxide. Um, so since carbon dioxide can't really slip out if it's in a pocket like this, you just put carbon dioxide in here and that creates a natural airlock as well that the dupes can move through. and the benefit of that is they don't get any debuff from moving through through water and uh, because they don't get soggy feet or anything like that. Uh, I don't think the carbon dioxide airlock can take very high difference in pressure though because then, then the gas will pressure you through for a lot of it so it would just slip out. You can see here for example it's vastly different pressure here and here which caused the water to do this. So the water can handle quite a lot of pressure, but still if there wouldn't be enough difference here, the water will also slip out. So then a mechanized airlock could probably be better. If you have, but that when you're talking really high pressure on one of the sides. Um, and I think that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to airlock. When it comes to the gases later, they have a few different uses. Now some of them you use simply for consuming, but uh, when it comes to transferring heat, uh, you want to use hydrogen. The reason for that is it's got high thermal conductivity than most other gases. You see here the thermal conductivity of oxygen is only 0 0.24, while on uh, in, uh, on the hydrogen uh, it's uh, 0 0.168. So it's um, higher, right? So you want to use hydrogen uh, when transferring heat with gas. Of course, it's nothing close to the heat transfer of, or heat capacity or thermal conductivity of oil. Uh, so that's why you see a lot of people when they have like a room with, for example, resorts, they put it in hydrogen because it's the best gas for, for, for like thermal conductivity or, or, or heat change. Um, if you want something with really low thermal conductivity, you've got chloride, you've got the super low thermal conductivity. Uh, so it's good if you want to kind of isolate um, with um, with gases. Uh, so I think that's about it. A sh very, very brief guide to, to gases and airlocks uh, with the rainbow room here as an example that still should be pretty stable. Thanks for watching. Cheers.